Okay, good morning. We're running a little late, if you may have noticed. We're going to try and get that a bit back on track. Uh, enjoying build. A bit tired. I am too. <laughs> but it's been really good fun. My name is Matt Farmer. I am a program manager in the uh, Azure integration team, which includes uh, logic apps and API management and a few other things. Uh, with me is my colleague Miao Zhang, uh, is also in that team, and we're here to talk to you today. Um, we're going to do a little demo that really shows you some simple things you can do with API management and logic apps. There's an enormous amount more to learn, which you can do at the booth and our session later today, and I'll mention that later on. So we're going to talk about uh, our session is zero to hero API development with API management and logic apps. So let's, without further ado, jump into that. So this session is really just about a problem. And the problem is this. You're, uh, let's say, one day, you're, uh, you're in the development team, you're, uh, you manage uh, your organizations, APIs, and applications, and one day, um, somebody in the business comes to you and says, you know what, I found this amazing agency that uh, is going to do us a new app. Um, it's fantastic. I hope you don't mind. I've gone ahead and told them to get on with it. Um, and uh, they are very expensive, but it's going to be awesome. By the way, they start today. Uh, can you just give them the API they need to be able to build your new um, ordering application. Um, don't block them, will you? Because they're charging by the hour. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've worked in IT departments where that's, uh, that has absolutely been the case. So we're going to show you how quickly you can use Azure integration uh, technologies to build a solution to that problem that unblocks that agency and gets the API starting to be used, and then implements it really efficiently and quickly with Azure Logic Apps. So what we're going to build? Well, first, we're going to use API management to mock an API, create responses for that API, and then use them within the uh, application so that team can get on and build their application quickly and easily. And then we're going to implement that API with Logic Apps, and I'm going to show you how you can simply string together a number of actions in Logic Apps uh, to create a new API operation and then implement that within API management so it's a real thing. So, that's the preamble. We're going to show you how to build it now, and we're going to get on with it. So, over to you, Meow. Oops, no. Great. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Cool. So, as Matt has mentioned, traditionally, front-end developers always have to wait for the back-end developers to finish up their code before they can code against this new API, right? It's like a waterfall model. So, I'm going to show you how quickly you can use API management to put together an API which returns mocked responses and immediately unblock your front-end developers. So I'm here in the Azure portal. This is uh, the API management instance for our little dog washing business. And uh, uh, let's, the first thing is let's go to the API view. So this is the interface where you can manage all your API facades within API management. And as you can see, I already have a few APIs created here. And one of them is called a Soapy Puppy, which is the name of our business. And under this API, currently, there are three operations that allows you to get appointment, to get customer information, and so forth. So let's say we want to add a new operation, which allows customers to, to request for a new appointment through our mobile app, right? And as a result of this, uh, if the uh, operation is successful, it will also return the price of how much this appointment might cost. So uh, to add a pro to add a new operation, I can either click on the Add Operation button here and manually provide all the metadata, including signature, request, response, schemas, and so forth. But as a you know, HTTP enthusiast, I prefer to use the Open API definition, which is formerly known as Swagger. Right? So in fact, within our product, we have a Swagger editor embedded right here. If we click, click on the pencil button here, so this is the uh, API, open API definition for my API. As you can see, currently, it has a few, uh, a few operations. And let's go all the way to the bottom. And uh, let me switch to my notepad here. Copy that. Switch back. Control-V. So what I did, let me just show you quickly. Here. So what I did is that I added a new uh, operation. I defined a new operation under the URL uh, suffix appointment. And uh, this uh, new, operation, new operation consumes uh, JSON and produces JSON. And I also 
uh, provided schemas for the payload of the request as well as the response. So if we look at the uh, schema for the uh, request, you can see that it takes five properties, including the customer ID, uh, name of the pet, breed of the pet, age, and also the zip code. I also provided an example for this payload. And for the uh, response, it's very simple. It just returns one property, which is a quote for this appointment. Right. So let's go ahead and click Save. OK, so now you can see a new operation has been added here. Right? So if we click on that, the next thing we need to do is to uh, enable mocking for this operation. So since I have, so in my API definition, I have already provided a sample response for this operation. So we can use that sample uh, to, we can just return that sample uh, from this operation. Right? So let's go to this operation, click on the pencil button here, and go to the mocking tab and enable static response, and choose the sample response that I provided earlier in the definition. OK, so now, under this operation, it tells me that mocking is enabled. So let's go ahead and uh, test this operation. So we have a test console embedded right here within the uh, admin UI. And this is the sample payload that I provided for the request. And let's make an API call. And I immediately get a response from this operation. Right? So at this point, uh, I can unblock my front, my front end developers while the back end developer, Matt, uh, is still working on the back end code. So now let me switch back to Matt. So we can go and implement our API now, or operations within it. So. Um, the first thing to point out is you may or may not be familiar with Logic Apps, and you uh, maybe saw it in the uh, Scott's keynote on Monday. One of the things to just point out about uh, Logic Apps, oops, as I bring up the, oh, no, not the display settings, you're not interested in those. One thing to point out about Logic Apps is that if you have uh, an HTTP based Logic App, it's triggered with an HTTP post, it returns a value. Effectively, from that point on, it's an operation on an API. So you can use Logic Apps to build individual operations and make them part of your API as we've done here. So what I've done is use the HTTP request response template. And you'll see here that the, we have uh, a JSON schema. Whoops, do not show again. Uh, a JSON schema for the input. Uh, we also have similar for the output. From this point on, this is your API operation. And you can do whatever you want in between those two parts of the logic app. So if I added, for example, add an action. Oop, there we go. Uh, and let's say maps. Get location by address. Let's just have a look at that. The items that I'm passing in in the JSON schema that I've defined are now uh, effectively uh, properties that you can use within the Logic App. So let's say we, so we passed in uh, zip code in our JSON schema. Zip code's available here. I can use it within the Logic App just like any other value that's uh, available within the Logic App to configure. Now, I was going to build the whole thing, but we're running a bit short of time. So let's go back to one I prepared earlier. And I'll just walk you through what sorts of things you can build. So while well, this logic app is coming up, so here's the logic app I've pre-built. And it's, it's doing a few things. If you imagine the sorts of things you might need to do if you were implementing a new uh, API based on a bunch of technologies that you already had in your business. So for example, uh, being able to access a legacy system that maybe is uh, SOAP-based or uh, REST-based by API, uh, augmenting that with some uh, um, mapping data, perhaps sending an email, the sorts of things you might want to do every time you build a system based on other component parts. And Logic Apps is fantastic for doing that. So if we look at the components I've got here, we have uh, get location by address. I'm getting a, a zip code, using a zip code get, to get an address of the user. I'm, uh, what I've actually got here is I'm uh, calling into an Azure function. So, uh, logic apps are fantastic for abstracting away the things that you do when you write code. Uh, a little bit boilerplate, a little bit 
The things that you don't want to spend lots of time on, making requests to other services. Why spend time writing code that needs to be debugged when you can use logic apps to do that stuff for you and you can concentrate on the things that really, really matter uh, in terms of making your business successful and, and advancing their technology. So this uh, function here just encapsulates some pricing logic and I'm calling it and using it. Um, I'm then using uh, a SOAP service that I've uh, actually installed in Azure API Management, exposed as REST, and I'm calling that from Logic Apps and then orchestrating that call. I'm sending an email and then I'm returning a response based on the value that we got back with a price. So uh, Logic Apps, and I'm rushing through this as you can probably tell, is, uh, is a really great way to take those op uh, operations, put them together. I haven't even gone into things like uh, for each loops and conditions that you can add to those. So you can orchestrate your logic and build these uh, operations very, very quickly uh, and make them available to use within your applications. So the final thing we need to do now is just implement that API back within API management. If you want to do that quickly, Meow. So right now, since we already have the backend implemented, right, we no longer need to use mocking API management. So the final thing we need to do is just to switch that operation to, uh, to, to make it connect to the actual backend instead of using mocking. So let me go back to the API's view. <laughs> it's going to be slow for you, just. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there we go. All right. OK, so let's go to our little API. And this is new operation that we created. As you can see, currently, it still says mocking as enabled. So the first thing, let's go to the backend for this operation. And as you can see, currently, it points to a placeholder HTTP endpoint because we are using mocking. So let's switch to Azure Resource and click the Browse button here. And this will show me all my Logic Apps under my Azure account. And let me just. Uh, wait for it to load and search for the logic app that Matthew just created. It's called Price Clean Puppy. And let's choose the HTTP trigger under uh, inside that uh, uh, logic app and select and click Save. OK, so now this operation is connected to the logic app. The last thing I need to do is turn off mocking because we no longer need it. So let's go back to the inbound section here, go to marking, turn it off, save. OK, so now let's test it again. If you remember, when uh, in, my in my mock, right, the price was $100 for the puppy, right, for, for the service. So now, it's, since it's connected to Logic App, let's see what's the actual price for this appointment. Let's go back to the test console. And again, I'm using the sample uh, payload for the request. And send. <laughs> Come on, fingers crossed. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we get an actual response from the Lodge Cap, and the actual price is $83.45. Hmm. Cool. So now we have an API in less than five minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Right, so uh, this has just been a very, very quick introduction to some of the things you can do with Azure API Management and Logic Apps to build integrations in the cloud. Quickly, what we did, we built mocks in API Management based on the schema we wanted to define. We uh, set those up so that the agency could go off and build the app without being unblock uh, blocked by us. Then we used Logic Apps to orchestrate a, a group of components we already had or components that were available within Logic Apps to very quickly build an API and deploy it. So, uh, quick summary, uh, Azure allows you to b quickly design and implement your APIs uh, in a flexible and effective way. Take a design first approach with Azure API management to unblock your front end developers and separate them from back end developers, and then use logic apps to quickly build APIs that put together composite actions to build uh, operations. And we've only scratched the surface of this. So there's a whole bunch more uh, integration stuff going on today. We have our uh, big breakout session at 1 p.m. Uh, where we're going to be announcing some new stuff, uh, talking about uh, API management, logic app, service bus, event grid. So please come along to that and come and see us. Um, there are, uh, there's a service bus and logic app session later today, also at 1.30. And if you want to come and try this stuff for real, we have a workshop 
uh, at the end of the day today where you can come and sit down and play with these technologies and meet some of the team. Um, we are also on the booth today, um, over in the middle of the uh, auditorium. We're also going to be recording our Logic Apps live session there in about an hour. Um, so come and talk to us, come and ask questions. We'd love to hear about your scenarios and love to hear more about what, uh, what you can do with uh, these technologies. Sorry for rushing through it, but thank you very much for sticking around and not going to see Mark Rasinovich. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much.